Hi everyone! I am Daniel Carla A. Salvador, a student from the University of Southern Mindanao, taking up Bachelor of Physical Education. In this video, we are going to talk about the official rules of Frisbee or Ultimate. Ultimate is a 7 aside team sport played with a flying disc. It is played in a rectangular field about half the width of a football field with an end zone at each end. The objective of each team is to score a goal by having a player catch a pass in the end zone that they are attacking. A thrower may not run with the disc but may pass the disc in any direction to any teammate. Any time a pass is com incomplete, a turnover occurs and the other team shall take possession and attempt to score in the opposite end zone. Games are typically played to 15 goals or around 100 minutes. Ultimate is self-officiated and non-contact. The spirit of the game guides how players officiate the game and conduct themselves on the field. Now let's talk about the spirit of the game. Ultimate is a non-contact, self-officiated sport. All players are responsible for administering and adhering to the rules. Ultimate re relies upon a spirit of the game that, that places the responsibility for fair play on every player. It is trusted that no player will, un will intentionally break the rules. Thus, there are no harsh penalties for inadvertent breaches, but rather a method of resuming play in a manner which stimulates that would most likely have occurred had there been no breach. Players should be mindful of the fact that they are acting as referees in any arbitration between teams. Players must know the rules, be fair-minded and objective, be truthful, explain their viewpoint clearly and briefly, allow opponents a reasonable chance to speak, consider their opponent's viewpoint, Use respectful words and body language with consideration of potential cultural differences. Resolve disputes as quickly as possible. Make calls in a consistent manner throughout the game. And only make a call when a breach is significant enough to make a difference to the outcome of the action. Highly competitive play is encouraged, but should never sacrifice the mutual respect between players. The following actions are examples of good spirit. Retracting a call when you no longer believe the call was correct. Checking it with an opponent on the sideline after a continuous interaction. Complimenting an opponent for good play or spirit. Introducing yourself to your opponent. And reacting calmly towards disagreement and provocation. The following actions are clear violations of the spirit of the game and must be avoided. Dangerous play and aggressive behavior, intentional fouling or other intentional rule breaches, taunting or intimidating opposing players, celebrating disrespectfully after scoring, making calls in retaliation to an opponent's call, calling for a pass from an opposition, from an opposition player, and other win-at-all-costs behavior. Teams are guardians of the spirit of the game and must take responsibility for teaching their players the rules and the good spirit, discipline teammates who display poor spirit, provide constructive feedback to other teams about what they are doing well and or how to improve their adherence to the spirit of the game, and call a spirit stoppage to address spirit issues as appropriate. In the case where a novice player is involved in a breach and does not know the rules, experienced players should assist to explain the breach. An experienced player who offers advice on rules and guides on field arbitration may supervise games involving beginners or younger players. Calls should be discussed by the players directly involved in the play and by players who have the best perspective on the play. Players and captains are solely responsible for making and resolving all calls. If after discussion, players cannot agree or it is not clear and obvious what occurred in a play or what would most likely have occurred in a play, the disc would be returned to the last non-disputed throw. Number two, let's talk about the playing field. 
The playing field is a rectangular area with dimensions and zones as shown as the figure and should be essentially flat, free of obstructions and afford reasonable player safety. The perimeter lines surround the play field and consist of two side lines along the length and two end lines along the width. The perimeter lines are not part of the play field. The goal lines are the lines that separate the central zone from the end zones and are part of the central zone. The brick marks are the intersection of two crossed one meter lines and in a central zone located a distance equal to the length of the end zone away from each goal line, midway between the side lines. Eight brightly colored flexible objects mark the corners of the central zone and the end zones. The immediate surroundings of the playing field should be kept clear of movable objects. Number three, equipment. Any flying disc acceptable to both captains may be used. WFDF may maintain a list of approved discs recommended for use. Each player must wear a uniform that distinguishes their team. No player may wear items of clothing or equipment that reasonably could harm the wearer or other players or impede an opponent's ability to play. Number 4. Point, Goal, and Game A game consists of a number of points. Each point ends with a, with a scoring of a goal. A game is finished and won by the first team to score 15 goals. A game is separated in two periods of play called halves. Halftime occurs when a team first scores 8 goals. The first point of each half starts when the half starts. After a goal is scored and the game has not been won or half time has not been switched, the next point starts immediately. The teams switch the end zone that they are defending and the team that scored becomes defense and pulls next. Number 5. Teams each team will put a maximum of 7 players and a minimum of 5, seven, of 5 players on the field during each point. Each team must designate a captain and a spirit captain to represent the team. A team may make unlimited substitutions after a goal is scored and before the team of, before the, their team signals readiness for the pool. Number 6. Starting a game Representatives of the two teams fairly determine which team first chooses, either whether to receive or throw the initial pool, or which end zone will they initially defend. The other team is given the remaining choice. At the start of the second half, these initial selections are switched. Number 7. The Pool At the start of the game, after halftime, or, any, or after a score, play commences with a throw by the defense called a pull. Teams must prepare for the pull without unreasonable delay. The pull may be made only after both teams have signaled their readiness by having their puller and player on a fence raised and hand above their head. After signaling readiness, all offensive players must stand with one foot on their defending goal line without changing location relative to one another until the pool is released. After signaling readiness, all defensive players must keep their feet entirely behind the vertical plane of the goal line until the pool is released. If a team breaches 7.3 or 7.4, the opposing team may call a violation offside. This must be called before the offense touches the disc. 7.8 still applies. If the defense chooses to call offside, the thrower must establish a 5 watt point and then play restarts as soon as possible as if the timeout had been called at that location. If the offense chooses to call offside, they must let the disc hit the ground untouched and then resume play as if a break has been called. As soon as the disc is released, all players may move in any direction. No player on the defensive team may touch the disc after a pull until a member of the offensive team contacts the disc or the disc hits the ground. If an offensive player inbounds or outbounds, 
touches the disc before it hits the ground and the offensive team fails to a subsequently establish possession, that is a turnover. If an offensive player catches the pool and subsequently establish possession, they must establish a private point at the location on the playing field nearest to where possession is established, even if that private point is in their defending end zone. If the disc initially contacts the playing field and never becomes out of bounds, the thrower must establish a pivot point where the disc stops, even if that pivot point is in their defending end zone. If the disc initially contacts the playing field and becomes out of bounds without contacting an offensive player, the thrower must establish a pivot point where the disc first crossed the perimeter line or the nearest location in the central zone if the pivot point would be in their defending end zone. If the disc does contact an offensive player before it becomes out of bounds, the thrower must establish a pivot point where the disc first crossed the perimeter line, even if that pivot point is in their defending end zone. If the disc contacts the out of bounds area without first touching the playing field or an offensive player, the thrower may establish a pivot point either at the brick mark closest to their defending end zone or at the location on the central zone closest to where the disc went out of bounds. Number 8, Section Play Set State of Play The play is dead and no turnover is possible after the start of a point until the pull is released. When the disc must be carried to the pivot after the pull or a turnover until a pivot point is established. After a call which stops the play or any other stoppage, until the disc is checked in, or after a disc hits the ground, until possession is, up, is established by the appropriate team. Players are allowed to move during the play. Play that is not dead is live. The thrower may not transfer possession of the disc during dead play to another player. Any player may attempt to stop the disc from rolling or sliding after it, hit, it has hit the ground. After a turnover the after, and after the pull, an offensive player must move at walking pace or faster to directly retrieve the disc and establish a pivot point. Number 9. Stall Count the marker administers a stall count on the thrower by announcing stalling and then counting from 1 to 10. The interval between the start of each number in the call count must be at least 1 second. The, call count, the stall count must be clearly communicated to the thrower. The marker may not only start and continue to a stall count when play is live or until a pivot is established after a turnover, they are within 3 meters of the thrower's pivot point, or the pivot location in the thrower is not at the location, and all defenders are legally positioned. If the marker moves beyond the approximate, appropriate 3 meter radius, or a different player becomes a marker, the stall count must be restarted at stalling 1. After a stoppage is play in play, the stall count is resumed as follows. After an accepted breach by the defense, the stall count restarts at stalling 1. After an accepted breach by the offense, the stall count restarts at maximum 9. After a concept uncontested stall out, the stall count restarts at stalling 8. After all other calls including peak, the stall count restarts at maximum 6. However, if there is a call involving the thrower and a separate receiving breach and disc is returned to the thrower, the stall count is resumed based on the outcome of the call involving the thrower. If there is a violation called related to the check, the stall count resumes at the same count that was determined prior to the violation. To restart a stall count at maximum N, the determi is determined by 9.5.2, 9.5.4, or 23.6 means the following. If X is the last 
agreed number fully uttered prior to the call, then the stall count resumes at stalling X plus 1 or stalling N, whichever of those two numbers is lower. Number 10, the check. Whenever a play stops during a point for a foul violation, contested turnover, specified turnover, contested goal, stoppage, discussion, or at the completion of a timeout, play must restart as quickly as possible with a check. The check may not may only be delayed for the discussion of a call. Player positioning after a call, except in the case of a timeout, and unless specified otherwise, if play stops before a pass is thrown. All players must return to the location they held when the call was made. If play stops after a pass is thrown, then if the disc is returned to the thrower, all players must return to the location they held when the thrower released the disc. If the result of the play stands, all players must return to the location they held when either a player established possession or the disc hit the ground. If a player other than the thrower gains possession as a result of an accepted breach, all players must return to the location they held when the breach occurred. Number 11, out of bounds. The entire playing field is in bounds. The perimeter lines are not part of the playing field and are out of bounds. All non players are part of the out of bounds area. If the disc is out of bounds and more than 3 meters from the pivot location, non players retrieve the disc. The thrower must carry the disc the, least, the last 3 meters to the playing field. Number 12, Receivers and Positioning A catch occurs when a player has a non-spinning disc trapped between the list of two body parts. A catch can enable a, a player to establish possession of the disc. If the player fails to maintain the catch due to subsequent ground contact related to the catch or contact related to the catch with a teammate or a legitimately positioned opposition player, Possession is deemed to have not occurred. After establishing possession, that player becomes a thrower. If offensive and defensive players catch the disc simultaneously, the offense retains possession. A player is an established posi position is entitled to remain in that position and must not be contacted by an opposing player. Number 13, Turnovers a turnover that transfers possession of the disc from one team to the other occurs when the disc contacts the ground while it is not in the possession of an offensive player. However, it is not down if a receiver catches a pass before the disc contacts the ground and maintains the catch while the disc is in contact with the ground. If a turnover location is in the offense if it is in the offense's defending end zone, the thrower may choose where to establish a pivot point. If after an accepted turnover, play has continued unknowingly, play stops the disc in return to the turnover location. Players resume their positions at the time the turnover occurred in play, which starts with a check. Number 14, Scoring a goal is scored if an inbounds player catches a legal pass and all their ground contacts there entirely within their attacking end zone. Or for an airborne player, all of their first simultaneous points of ground contact after catching the disc are entirely within their attacking end zone. And they subsequently establish possession of the disc and maintain the catch through all ground contact related to the catch. The time at which a goal is deemed to have been scored is when the player established possession. Number 15, calling fouls, infractions, and violations. A breach of the rules due to the non-minor contact between two or more opposing players is a foul. A player intentionally initiating minor contact is still a breach of the rules but is to be treated as a violation, not a foul. Number 16, Continuation after a call Whenever a foul or violation call is made, or a player attempts to stop play in any way, play stops immediately and no turnover is possible. If a foul or violation is called against the thrower and the thrower attempts a pass, 
or is called by the thrower during the act of throwing or is called or occurs when the disc is in the air. Then play continues until possession has been established. Number 17. Fouls. Dangerous play. Actions demonstrating reckless disregard for the safety of fellow players or posing significant risk of injury to fellow players or other dangerously aggressive behaviors are considered dangerous play and must be treated as a foul. Receiving foul. A receiving foul occurs when a player initiates non-minor contact with an opponent before, while, or directly after either player makes a play on the disc. Contact with an opponent's arms or hands that occurs after the disc has been caught or after the opponent can no longer make a play on the disc is not a sufficient basis for a foul but should be avoided. Strip fouls. A strip foul occurs when an opponent fouls a player and that causes a player to drop the disc they caught to it or to lose possession of the disc. Blocking fouls. A blocking foul occurs when a player takes a position that an opponent moving in a legal manner will be unable to avoid, taking into account the opponent's expected position based on their established speed and direction, and non-minor contact results. This is to be treated as either a receiving foul or an indirect foul, whichever is applicable. Forced out fouls. A forced out foul occurs when a receiver is in the process of establishing possession of the disc and is fouled by a defensive player before establishing possession and the contract the cost the receiver. Defensive throwing or marking fouls. A defensive throwing foul occurs when a defensive player is illegally positioned and there is non-minor contact between the illegally positioned defensive player and the thrower or a defensive player initiates a non-minor contact with the thrower or there is non-minor contact resulting for the, from the thrower and the defender both vying for the same unaccepted position prior to the release. Offensive throwing or thrower fouls. An offensive throwing foul occurs when the thrower is solely responsible for initiating non-minor contact with a defensive player who is in a legal position. Contact occurring during the thrower's foul through is not a sufficient basis for a foul but should be avoided. Indirect fouls. An indirect foul occurs when there is non-minor contact between a receiver and a defensive player that does not directly affect an attempt to make a play on the disc. If the foul is accepted, the fouled player may make up any positional disadvantage caused by the foul. Offsetting fouls If accepted fouls are called by offensive and defensive players on the same play, these are offsetting fouls, and the disc must be Return to the last non-disputed thrower. If there is non-minor contact that is caused by two or more opposing players moving towards a single point simultaneously, this must be treated as offsetting fouls. Number 18. Infractions and Violations Marking infractions include the following. Fast count, straddle, disc space, wrapping, double team, Vision, travel, peak violations, marking infraction, include the following fast count. It starts or continues to stall count illegally, does not start or start the call count with stalling, counts in less than one second intervals does not cor correctly reduce or reset the stall count when required, or does not start the stall count from the correct number. Straddle a line between a defensive player's feet comes within one disc diameter of the thrower's pivot point. This space, any part of a defensive player is less than one disc diameter away from the torso of the thrower. However, if this situation is caused so solely by movement of the thrower, it is not an infraction. Wrapping. A line between a defensive player's hands on or arms comes within one disc diameter 
of the floor with Torizo. Or any part of the defensive player's body is above the thrower's pivot point. However, if the situation is caused solely by a movement of the thrower, it is not an infraction. Double team. A defensive player other than the marker is within 3 meters of the thrower's pivot point without also guarding another offensive player. However, merely running across the air this area is not a double team. Vision, a defensive player uses any part of their body to intentionally obstruct a thrower's vision. Traveling infractions, the thrower may attempt a pass at any time as long as they are entirely inbounds or have established an inbounds pivot point. However, an inbounds player who catches a pass while airborne may attempt a pass prior to contacting the ground. A travel infraction occurs if the thrower establishes a pivot point at an incorrect location, including by not reducing speed as quickly as possible after a catch or changing direction after a catch. Peak violations if a defensive player is guarding one offensive player and they have prevented from moving towards or with that player by another player. That defensive player may call peak. However, it is not a peak if both the player being guarded and the obstructing player are making a play on the disc. Number 19, Safety Stoppages Injury Stoppage An injury stoppage may be called by the injured player or by any player on the injured player's team. If the injury was not caused by an opponent, the player must choose either to be substituted or to charge their own team with a timeout. Technical stoppage, any player who recognizes a condition that engages players, including if a player has an open or bleeding wound, include all, include, should call a technical stoppage by calling technical or stop and play must stop immediately. Number 20, last, for, last rule for the official rules of the Frisbee, the timeouts. The player calling a timeout must, must form a T with their hands, like this, and with one hand and the disc, and should call timeout to, to opposition players. After the start of a point and before both teams have signaled readiness, a player from either team may call a timeout. The timeout extends the time between the start of the of the point and subsequent pull by 75 seconds. After the pull, only a thrower with possession of the disc may call a timeout. The timeout starts when T is formed and lasts 75 seconds after such a timeout. Substitutions are not allowed except for injury. Play is restarted at a pivot location. The thrower must remain the same. All other offensive players must establish a stationary position at any location. Once the offensive players have selected positions, defensive players must then establish a stationary position at any location. The stall count restarts at maximum 9 and however, if the marker has been switched, the stall count restarts at stalling 1. If the thrower attempts to call a timeout, while play is live and when their team has no remaining timeouts, play is stopped. The marker must add 2 seconds to the stall count they would have restarted play on before restarting play with a check. If this results in a stall count of 10 or above, this is a stall out turnover. Again, all this mentioned and all that we have talked about in this video are about the WFDF Rules of Ultimate 2021 to 2024. The official version effective 2021-0101 produced by the WDF Ultimate Rules Subcommittee. Thank you for watching.